Hey guys, this is Peter, and today I want to show you something pretty cool. Today I'm, I'm going to show you a portable power station that I'm building, and well, I've got it all put together, and it works pretty darn awesome. I want to highlight a couple of the key features of it and show you why I made some of the choices I've made. So why am I building my own portable power station? Well, A, I wanted to go bigger. You may have seen some of my videos in the past where I've been able to run my air conditioner or my heater off of these things, and it's great because I have panels outside on the roof, and I charge up my batteries, and yeah, I can use this stuff. But I wanted to go bigger. Bigger than they were willing to go. So the biggest unit I had was actually 1,440 watt hours. And you remember, I'd run that with my uh, air conditioner. I had that video. It was great. Uh, but that would do 2,000 watts. I only needed 600, but that was a very capable device. Pretty expensive. For about the same amount of money, I can choose my own components. I can, well, some of them I actually had laying around from uh, previous projects. So it is an investment. It is, if you choose proper components, you can reutilize them in the future. And I'm going to do just that. So uh, there's a charger. That's an important component. And an inverter is another big component. And the battery, probably the most important of them all. And that's what we're going to talk about today. This one is from Vaderer. And it's a V-A-T-R-E-R. -E it is a pretty cool company. They make a lot of batteries, not just the one. They make a ton of different batteries. They make them for RV applications. They make them for, for marine applications. They make them for, oh, and they're on sale right now. How convenient is that? But here, I'm going to scroll down. They make them for golf cart applications, for RVs, for marine applications, even for home. Some really great ones. Look at that. Look at that home system they have. Pretty cool stuff. Hey, I'm going to put a link to their webpage. It'll help me out. Well, they sent me this battery. That's the long and the short of it. But they actually asked me, which battery do you want? And I'm going to tell you why I chose this one and some of the great features of it. So as I wanted to go bigger, and I've built these systems before using some smaller batteries. The standard battery is kind of 12.8 volts, uh, 100 amp hours. Well, that would be 1,280 watt hours. So, I mean, that's pretty good. This battery is over 5,000, 5,120. Now, where am I getting these numbers? You simply multiply these two numbers together. 200 amp hours times 25.6 volts. 25.6 is exactly twice of 12.8. So basically, this is like two batteries together in series and then two more in parallel. This is an example of four batteries. But it's better than that. You also get a BMS or battery, battery management system. It's built into this battery. So it's going to actually balance the load between all of those different cells and make sure that everything is safe. BMS is going to keep you from over discharge from overcharge, from overcurrent, and even short circuits. And what I really like about this, every battery that Vaderer is making is lithium iron phosphate, which is my favorite chemistry because it is a known concept, it is a safe one, and you're gonna get your money's worth because its life is really long. Up to 5,000 charge cycles. That's years, guys. That's almost 10 years of using it every single day. And that's what I want to do. I want to charge it up. Hey, my solar panels are on the roof every day. Let's charge it up and let's use it as we want it. So what I'm going to show you is my power system that I built. And yeah, I put it on a, a well, a, I guess you'd call it a hand truck. <laughs> so I bought a hand truck, screwed a board to it. And I did all this so that you could see all the different components and it's still portable. So uh, it is a big battery. This is about 85 pounds worth of battery but it's just one simple connection and it's all managed. It even has its own app. I love that because then I could just interrogate it and take a look. Previously, if you had multiple batteries and you wanted to build a system like this, A, I would have needed four batteries. Would have been a lot more than this. Those were like 350 each. I guess that's what they go for now. So they were a little bit more at the time, but 350 times two would be 700. This would be a $1,400 battery and that would not be managed. So you'd actually have to put shunts on everything and well, set up programs and really know what you're doing because what a battery is, is storage, storage for energy, a lot of energy. In fact, if you were wrenching on this and you were to touch the positive pole to the negative pole, it would spot weld that wrench to the poles. So uh, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of energy, and you want to make sure that you handle it responsibly. I'm going to show you Vaderer's... Uh
I really like this mission statement. They are bringing lithium iron phosphate technology and democratizing it, making it available to everybody. So I love the fact that they're focused on lithium iron phosphate. That is the best, most responsible battery chemistry in my experience. It is a very responsible one. It does have a long life. It has so many great features to it. And well, the fact that all of their batteries are lithium iron phosphate is just great. Uh, there are some deeper uh, battery chemistries that are out there. Some people are like, this one does more. Look at the charge cycles. It's not there. It's just, you don't want to waste your time or waste your money. If you don't need extreme power, like you're not designing a, a rover to land on Mars, this is great chemical density with a huge life. And it's very responsible. It's very well controlled. Now, I put it on a, a board so that you could, well, see everything. I can point out all the different points that I put in circuit breakers, that kind of thing and how I wired it all together. We've been using this for several days now, and it is great. We run a heater in the front room. I actually wired it outside the house and back into the house so we can just plug in a heater and run it off the sun that we collected that day. I've also, uh, not for this video, but for the next one, I got a wind turbine, and I can't wait to hook that one up to this as well so that when it's not perfectly sunny, I can still get a lot. Hey, it's winter time, and the sun is still shining. Uh, it's cold outside, but the sun is shining and the sun is lower on the horizon. So I'm going to show you how I took my solar panels and lifted them up because you want your angle of incidence to be a little bit higher because the sun's a little bit lower. So I lifted my panels up, getting some really good energy, and we're utilizing it, guys. Hey, this, the electric companies now are charging you more when you get home from work. How, it's, it's lower all day. Well, charge it with the sun and then uh, load it up and uh, then you can use it when you get home. Uh, I really like that. I like running the heater with it. Guess what? My heater is about 600 watts. 600 watts from a 5100 uh, watt hour battery. It's going to be about eight and a half hours. So what we're doing it for is we'll just run it for about five or six hours and then turn it off. It's great. Hey, you don't have to worry about over discharging this. You don't have to worry about overcharging it. Great battery, but um, I'm gonna show you how I've hooked everything up. Let's take a look. All right, so I struggled with how to share this with you for a long time. First, I put it on a board and I thought, you know, there's so many videos online where I'm trying to see where the wires go. I wanted to lay out the components and explain how you hook them together and actually go ahead and do it for you. So I'm gonna show you both ways. So there it is on the board, but then I have all these different components. There is the solar cells, the charge controller, the battery itself, and the inverter. Of course, we go to the plugs. But I did want to uh, put some safety in there, some fuses between each segment. So let's start with the solar cells. The solar cells are a lot like batteries in the fact that when you apply them together, you can put them, connect them together in different ways. You can either do series or parallel or a combination of the two. So here's what happens uh, when you take a single panel, which a uh, single panel for me, there's a sticker on the back. It'll tell you what the voltage is and what the maximum current is. So mine are 26 and 10. So first thing I did was put them in series. Putting them in series, you add the voltages together. So 26 and 26 is 52. You do have to use like type uh, cells, just like if you're using a battery. And uh, then you could, of course, with batteries as well, you can put them in parallel. So I did two groups of 52 and 10, 52, uh, volts 10 amps and put them in parallel now there's a special cable for that that allows you to put them in cap uh, parallel and uh, I used one of those cables so that I could hook them in and make them one cable there we kept the voltage the same because I couldn't put 52 and 52 you can see my charge controller will only accept up to 100 that would be 104 so I had to go in parallel and that took my current uh, which is 10 amps and made it 20 amps. So that fits inside the 50, that's great. I still have some room to go. In fact, I could grab another set of four panels just like this one and put them together. So first thing I did is put a fuse in. Now, why did I choose a 30 amp fuse? Well, because I only have 20 amps and it seems appropriate. All right, now the next thing I did is I implemented a bus bar. A bus bar allows you to connect to the battery without it being on the battery itself. 
you want really good connections you don't want anything loose you don't want any capacitance so a nice bus bar you can really crank down on to get good connections i ran really good wires from the battery having one battery just saved my butt <laughs> so nice because I don't have to worry about hooking the batteries in parallel and series and then if they're balanced properly and then monitoring the temperature and trying to create a BMS. This one has a built-in BMS system. So it's going to watch for overcharging. It's going to balance the load between the cells. It's going to monitor it and take care of itself. I really like that. So here again, we're going to use the power equation for the battery. So why did I use a 150 amp fuse well because i'm going to an inverter that's 4000 watts so 150 times 25.6 well is 3800 something so right in that range again i wanted to err on the side of safety and yeah i can run that inverter almost to its maximum 3800 some odd watts is going to be plenty for me and the energy, I'm getting the maximum energy because I'm able to charge this battery all the way up. So uh, the charge controller is going to take the voltage, 52 volts potentially, and the 20 amps and convert it to what fits the battery. It will automatically detect if the battery is a 12 volt or a 24 volt. And some of them will even do 48 volt systems. But all it's going to do is take that voltage, match the battery, and fill the battery nice and responsibly. It has some good features in there in the software where you can have set points where it changes from different types of charging. There's a bulk charging, there's absorption charging, and then finally your float. And it has great, this, this is a wonderful controller. This is from Victron Energy. They make all sorts of different ones, but super easy to set up and they have basic profiles that will get you started nice and safely. And of course, once I did it, I think the first time I charged it up, it went to absorption at 83%. And I thought, well, I can bump that up a little bit. So I chatted with the engineers and bumped it up a little bit. And now my battery is getting up safely to 100%. Really great stuff. And I've been really happy with it. Hope this chart helped you out and seeing all the different things. I do recommend getting a bus bar. I do recommend putting in as many uh, fuses as your is you feel comfortable with. I wanted to make sure that everything was fused so I didn't have anything going awry. Oh, and then of course I went to um, the the inverter that I have is very high end. It'll do 4,000 watts. It'll do 110 volts and 220. So what I wanted to do is I got a nice box for it and I took out from out of there, there's two hot leads. The black is hot, the red is hot, and the white is neutral. I put it into a box. There it is. You can see the red is going into one side. There it is. And see this metal zigzag through? That's because the white is one phase and the red is another phase. And if you get a special fuse uh, box or fuse puller and put it in there, it'll grab both poles. And there's your 220. It's two hot 110s. So Let's see, we got the black is over on this side. I don't know if you could see it. The red is over on this side and the white is your neutral bar. So there you go. I had to, I still need a ground bar. So I'm not officially grounded, but it is running quite nicely. And yeah, I can add all sorts of different fuses. And of course you just reach down at the bottom of the fuse, loosen that screw and put your hot line there and uh, wire it to your favorite receptacle. There you go. So uh, I have 15 amps that I run my heater with. This one goes inside and I run the heater with it. This one goes right inside my garage so that I can use for things inside the garage. And these ones, this 20 amp fuse, TBD. It hasn't been officially uh, it's assigned anything yet, but there it goes. I'm ready to fill out this box and uh, ready to use my power. So one of the things I wanted to do with it is get a 220 amp fuse breaker these things are cheap they're they're 10 to 20 bucks slap that in there and be able to run a well pump which is 220 volts so this would enable a well pump to run in the event of a power outage for a long time Ooh, and then i'm going to add a wind turbine to this so when the sun's not going but the wind's moving i'll be able to charge up the battery too you know, in California where I live, it's mostly sunny, even though it's cold in the winter. So I still get good sun, but when it's not sunny, it's 
usually windy. There you go. Um, anyway, guys, hey, thanks so much for watching. If this helped out, do give it a thumbs up. It's always appreciated. Leave comments down below. Always read those. And uh, if you have questions, especially about this setup, I think I understand it now. So uh, let me let me know what they are, and I'll answer them down below. See you in the next one, guys.